All right, well, Pikmin 3 is almost upon us here in North America. It's been almost a decade since the last game, and I am happy to say it was worth the wait. <laughs> Pikmin is one of those franchises that can be easy to dismiss based on looks alone. What some might mistake for a cutesy child's game is actually quite a sophisticated and deeply involved strategy series. One that favors multitasking and precise coordination skills, but doesn't compromise either for the sake of a cute moment. Pikmin 3 takes this idea and runs with it, offering more options than ever before, with even higher stakes to match. The third game focuses on a set of three new characters, astronauts on a mission to find food and bring it back to their home on Kopai. During transit, they crash land on a nearby planet and become separated, at which point their goal is to regroup and get the hell out. What begins as a single protagonist game eventually expands to accommodate three playable characters and a swarm of curiously obedient creatures called Pikmin. In terms of progression, Pikmin 3 strikes a good balance between the strict 30-day limit of the first game and the almost limitlessness of the second one. Here, everything is handled via fruit. Every piece of fruit you collect gets turned into juice at the end of the day, and those provide the sustenance you'll need to continue exploring. This replaces the need for arbitrary time limits while still imposing a sense of urgency, a crucial facet of the Pikmin series. It's also where the fun stems from. There's a masochistic joy to be had by finally solving a puzzle, only to realize you have 15 seconds to get back before your entire troop is exterminated. This constant tension keeps the game exciting until the very end. Pikmin 3 doesn't just improve the formula set by its predecessors, it adds to it. Rock Pikmin and Flying Pikmin are both new to the game, and each adds a unique dimension of gameplay. The Rock Pikmin are clumsy, but heavy, and are great for uncovering objects encased in crystals, or brute forcing enemies that just won't die. Flying Pikmin are perhaps some of the most useful ones because they can't be trampled on, but they're also weaker, making them better options for transport than for combat. Every Pikmin has its own strengths and flaws, and they all play an important role in the game. The boss fights in particular require astute planning. Each one has a unique vulnerability that's readily exploited by the right combination of Pikmin. Just get used to this noise, because you're going to be hearing it a lot. It's hard not to feel overwhelmed with three playable characters and five different Pikmin types, but the game does everything it can to help you out without taking unfair punches. New concepts and ideas are introduced slowly, but always in a well-formulated and digestible manner. Likewise, the controls are about as intuitive as they can be. Unfortunately, without motion sensor support, the gamepad just isn't precise enough to fully micromanage. It's a shame, as it would have been nice to play the game with just that, rather than switching back and forth between the Wiimote and the nunchucks. Most of the gamepad's menu options aren't even that useful, truthfully, but the permanent map display is extremely handy if you have navigation issues. It can also be used to offload certain responsibilities, like sending characters from point A to point B. This is essential to beating certain levels, particularly towards the end of the game when things get decidedly more frantic. Neither the single player nor the co-op requires the full use of the gamepad, and that's fine because the multiplayer is just as exhilarating without it. In addition to the campaign, there are optional co-op missions where one or two players are tasked with collecting a certain amount of treasure or defeating a certain amount of enemies or bosses in a set time. It's a fun little distraction with a lot of options for individual customization, including a variation on Capture the Flag, but with macaroons instead of flags. Because Nintendo. There's also a competitive multiplayer mode called Bingo Battle, where players are pitted against each other to see who can collect enough items to fill up their bingo card the fastest. It's a joyfully simple exercise, but one that closely mirrors the chaos of the campaign. Bingo! As stressful as it can be, the world of Pikmin 3 is still a captivating one, boasting some of the most beautiful and well-polished environments in any Wii U game. The levels are perfectly designed, so you never spend too much time sitting around wondering what to do. Your goal is usually clear, it's simply a matter of executing it. Efficiency optimization. 
That is a phrase you don't hear every day, especially concerning games. But when you think about it, that's really what Pikmin 3 is all about, and the Pikmin series in general. I mean, yes, there are puzzles, but a good 75% of the game is still just moving guys from point A to point B as fast as you can and killing everything along the way. I think I just described all video games. It's the adrenaline rush that keeps you coming back for more. Constantly telling yourself, just one more day of exploring, just one more piece of fruit. It's a compulsion you have to collect everything in sight and wrap it all up at the end of the day with a giant bow and send it flying off into space. It's Pikmin 3, and whether you like strategy games or not, I think we can all agree that there's really nothing quite like it. I give it a 4 out of 5. So that is my review of the charmingly adorable Pikmin 3. The game is out on August 4th for the Wii U exclusively, so if you have one, there is no reason not to pick this up. Happy hunting and gathering.